Let's take a look at self-indicating fuses. These are fuses that you can plug in, in this case, into a vehicle. And when they blow, they light up to show you which fuse is blowing. So I'll turn this one on and you'll see that because this one has been pre-blown, it's glowing at the end. I shall zoom in this a wee bit so you can see it better. So you can see it's actually glowing fairly brightly. Certainly in a traditional fuse box under the hood of a car or the bonnet of a car, it would be amply bright. Uh, it's passing 32 milliamps. Here is another version. It's the miniature fuse. And this also is tungsten based. And if I put the clips on, you will see it lights up actually a wee bit brighter. It's fairly bright at 40 milliamps. And then we have the LED version. And uh, because the fuse can go in both ways, there are actually two LEDs. And if I put this on, it just a dull red LED in there. It's, it's bright enough. It's fine at uh, one milliamp. Although I think it's actually less than that. Uh, it's just barely sort of just indicating. And uh, there's actually two LEDs. The circuit board in here is this size. It's absolutely microscopic. Two LEDs and a resistor. But anyway, don't take my word for it. Let me show you pictures because that's what it's all about. So I shall move these fuses to the side, available in various current ratings, and we'll take a look at the first exhibit here. So I shall zoom out to fit and focus down to here. So here are the uh, main blades of the fuse, the metal carrier, and these are the blades that actually go into the uh, fuse holder. There is the fusible link, and at this point in time, I'd like to mention vehicle fuses should not be used with high voltage. Like, say, for instance, 120, 240 volts. They are strictly for around about the 12 or 24 volt region. I'm not sure what their actual maximum voltage rating is. If I had thought about it, I would have looked that up. But typically speaking, just low voltage uh, power supplies. AC or DC, I suppose, technically speaking. And uh, in here, they've got a pin going up here, but they've put an L... Uh, tungsten lamp in and they've just wedged the wires behind the, the metal blades so that when the fuse link blows the current flows through the lamp to the load if the load is passing enough current. Next exhibit. Uh, super fuzzy. Close up on the tiny little fuse. There it is there. And uh, in this case you can see the blades here. The carrier and it's got the tiny little link zigzagging across here. And then it's got little pads that are going up and touching the bottom of that circuit board, which is just basically placed into the end. And then these are clipped in. They hold it in place and also make contact at the same time, which is a little bit of a juggling act, to be honest. Uh, if I show you the inside of this fuse, it gives you a better look at that circuit board. It's got a 6.8K resistor. We could work out the current. Hold on. The LEDs are red. You can see one is round one way and one is round the other way. So if we work out, say, the 12 volt supply minus, say, the 2 volts of the LED gives 10 volts divided by 6800 ohms equals, it is 1 milliamp. So it's, say, 1.5 one, one milliamps. Ample. That's fine for lighting an LED. But let me show you this in schematic form because you'll also find these on other circuit boards. It's a great thing to actually add into a design. So in the first example, we'll look at a 12 volt DC system. I shall make sure I'm focused down onto here. That'd be a good idea. So there's a 12 volt bus and here's the zero volt rail or chassis or chassis if you're in America. Now, traditionally, these are the fuses there are the loads. Traditionally, you might have a little uh, resistor and LED across the load after the fuse, just to show when the fuse is intact. Basically speaking, it will say something like 12 volt next to it. And when it lights up, you know that the fuse for the 12 volt circuit is intact. You'll often see that in control circuit boards. Uh, I've shown a 1K resistor here, to be honest. They don't have to be very bright, and they're going to be lit all the time. I'd say choose a higher value resistor, but I just chose that up to match the others here, which won't be lit all the time because they only light when it blows. However, the other option here is to have the fuse and the resistor and LED across it. And when the fuse is intact, it's actually bridging out the resistor and LED, so there's no voltage across that, so uh, the LED is off. If the fuse blows, enough current usually flows through the resistor, the LED, and the load to actually make the LED light up. In the case of these fuses, because they can be swapped in polarity, uh, 
they're using a resistor and two inverse parallel LEDs. Only one of them will light up, but it means that one will light up whichever way round it is. That would also work in AC. The LEDs would jitter backwards and forwards at the mains frequency. The other option, as used in these chunky ones, and the other small ones with a tungsten lamp in them, uh, they just have a small blub, a bulb. Uh, so let's say 12 volt, uh, 30 to 40 milliamps apparently, because that's what these were. And in this case, uh, when it blows, the fuse blows, the current flows through the bulb and through the load. That's assuming there aren't things actually activating the, you know, that you might have a, a relay contact in here that disconnects the load and it's only when it's connected that it blows the fuse so you'd actually have to test it under active conditions the other option and i've used this myself uh, is i often on uh, my designs i'm a big fan of putting neons neon indicators on main circuitry to show when a circuit board is powered so the technician working on it can see uh, just got a reminder that it's active so in this case the neon down here would light up to show that this, the circuit was active. But in the case of the fuse blowing again, current would flow through uh, the resistor and the neon instead, and the neon indicator would light via the load. Or even if the load was broken, it would actually light via the other one. You'd get both on. But it's lot, if this indicator here is lit, then, then there's a fuse blown. Uh, but that is it. It's a very simple thing, very straightforward. Uh, if you want to put some of these in your own vehicle, uh, they are available on eBay. But do remember, as Lewis Rossman showed not that long ago, that some of the uh, online sellers are selling fuses that are not that accurate. Uh, so maybe better getting them from a good source. Having said that, when you get a short circuit on a vehicle, it's usually quite decisive and passes oodles of current for blowing fuses. But that's it. They are interesting little things. Self-indicating fuses. Very useful for fault diagnosis.